In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, my Jesus, Redeemer of my soul, my divine model, who can understand the infinite love and mercy out of which you were born in a stable, lived a life filled with humility and poverty, burdened with pains, labor, and scorn? Who can understand my indescribable ingratitude toward your infinite love and mercy? Oh my God, it is very true that for my unspeakable ingratitude, I deserve that you withhold your gifts from me. Yet, through your infinite mercy, through the infinite merits of Jesus Christ, through the merits and intercession of Mary and of all the angels and saints, I firmly believe and am certain that you will grant me perfect contrition for my sins. Furthermore, you will grant me the grace to imitate you in your humble, poor, suffering, laborious, and obedient life in order to perfect myself, created as the living image of God, particularly as I walk along with you in my thoughts and in my spirit on the way to Calvary. Amen. The first station, Pilate condemns Jesus to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At the order of Pilate, the soldiers scourge Jesus, place a crown of thorns on his head, put a purple robe on him, slap and mock him, long live the King of the Jews. Then, Jesus is unjustly condemned to be crucified. Jesus accepts this unjust condemnation in silence as the will of his Father. St. Vincent Pallotti says, Do not condemn, but pardon the one who condemns, considering that his intention is good. Sympathize with all and pray for all. Am I judgmental? Do I condemn or accuse others unjustly? Do I have compassion for those who are unjustly condemned? How do I react? when I am unjustly judged, blamed, or condemned. Eternal Father, grant me the grace not to be judgmental. Help me to accept unjust condemnation with calmness and a Christ-like attitude. Eternal Father, in union with the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our Divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us.
The second station. Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. After Pilate condemns Jesus to be crucified, the soldiers take charge of him and place the heavy wooden cross on his bruised and bleeding shoulders. By accepting the cross, Jesus willingly offers himself to suffer and die for the salvation of the world. St. Vincent Pallotti invites us to perfect spiritual observance of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and to become similar to him in living a humble, poor, hardworking, and contemptuous life. Do I accept when suffering is a part of my life? Do I seek to imitate Jesus' example of sacrifice and acceptance of God's will? What is my attitude toward the crosses in my life? Am I ready to live like Jesus in a humble, poor, and hardworking life? Eternal Father, give me the grace to accept the crosses in my life in imitation of Jesus, who suffered for me. Eternal Father, in union with the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our Divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ, crucified, have mercy on us. station. Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus begins his journey towards Mount Calvary, carrying his heavy cross. All the sufferings he has undergone thus far have weakened him. His wearied legs and fatigued body do not allow him to move on he stumbles and falls under his cross. Despite all of this, he continues on thinking of humanity. St. Vincent Pallotti says, When I realize that I have failed, I will perform an act contrary to the omission committed as an act of sorrow for the defect. How do I cope with any sinful habits? Do I accept when I have failed or fallen short? Am I genuinely sorry for the times that I have sinned? Do I make an effort to make amends in the areas or situations in which I have sinned? Eternal Father, by the power of Jesus' first fall under the cross, help me to walk in your grace and to avoid habitual sin. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving as if you have already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. station. 
Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. On his way to Calvary, Jesus sees his mother. Jesus and Mary look at each other. Their gaze melts each other's hearts, and they are stricken with grief. Their love for one another empowers them to accept God's will and persevere with courage and determination. St. Vincent Pallotti says, Love accommodates all, believes all, hopes all, and bears all. It does not stop at any difficulty, but conquers. It is not alarmed by any contradiction, but is more courageous in charity. Do I ask for God's help to cope with difficulties in life? Am I a person of faith, hope, and endurance? Is my love of God and others firm and faithful? Or is the love that I share fickle or easily tested? Eternal Father, fill my heart with the same spirit of love that filled the hearts of Jesus and Mary, so I may face loss and pain with courage. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Weakened by his sufferings, Jesus finds it difficult to carry the cross. The executioners fear Jesus may die en route, and they force Simon of Cyrene, a passerby, to help Jesus carry his cross. Initially, Simon reluctantly helps Jesus. Carrying the cross together with Jesus makes Simon realize the help he offers to Jesus is good and acceptable to God thus giving him a sense of purpose. St. Vincent Pallotti says, Since good is all that I plan to do, I intend to do good always. I will try to excite in myself the intention to do it all. Am I generous? in giving myself to the service of others? Do I work for the good of others in everything I do? Are my motives for doing good well-intentioned? Eternal Father, grant me the grace to see the needs of others. Help me to address their needs, thereby bringing you glory. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, 
in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus' face, covered with sweat and blood, moves Veronica to wipe his face with her veil. An image of Jesus' holy face is imprinted on the cloth, thus rewarding Veronica for her kindness as Jesus continues on his journey to Calvary. St. Vincent Pallotti says, On thinking about, hearing, or seeing afflicted, distressed, tormented persons, worn out and weighed down with work or heavy loads, I will try to excite in myself a vivid compassion for them. Do I empathize with those who suffer? Do I reach out with compassion towards those in need? What prevents me from doing acts of kindness? Eternal Father, like Veronica, give me a compassionate heart and a courageous spirit that impels me to reach out to those in need. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Exhausted by carrying the heavy cross and climbing the steep hill, Jesus succumbs to exhaustion and falls a second time. The soldiers force him to continue. Though struggling, Jesus perseveres in accomplishing the will of his Father. According to Pilate, for love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must persevere until death to live lovingly the perfect observance of being nailed to the mystical cross. Do I persevere in my state of life despite the sufferings I experience? When suffering is continuous, Do I persevere in the Christian life? Does the example of Jesus' perseverance inspire me? Eternal Father, by the example of Jesus' second fall under the weight of the cross, grant me the perseverance and grace in my vocation until my death. Eternal Father, In union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, 
in thanksgiving as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Carrying his cross to the place of his death, Jesus meets some women of Jerusalem who are moved with pity, weeping and wailing for him. Despite fatigue and mental torment, Jesus feels concern for them, their children, for Jerusalem and its inhabitants with the difficulties that lie ahead. St. Vincent Pallotti, fascinated by Jesus' sensitivity and feelings for others amid his own personal suffering, said, Perfect spirit is found in the crucified Jesus in whom is found love, charity, humility, poverty, solitude, and everything else. Do I get lost and weighed down in the moments of personal suffering? Like Jesus, do I look beyond my suffering into the needs of others? What should I learn from Jesus' response to the women of Jerusalem? Eternal Father, grant me the grace to imitate Jesus, who was sensitive and showed concern for others, even amid his own personal suffering. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus becomes slower and slower as his strength diminishes due to the weight of the cross. Beating him cruelly, the soldiers insist Jesus continue to walk faster. Jesus' body gives out, and he falls for the third time. The thought of accomplishing his father's plan for the salvation of the world compels him to get up and continue his journey towards Calvary. Pilate reminds us, I confess and affirm that your most holy will contains all good and all the most sublime perfection. Hence, may your most holy and most plain will, especially in the unfavorable things, be my paradise. Does the duty to carry out God's will for my life strengthen me to deal with suffering and difficulties? Like Jesus, am I ready to do the will of God in unfavorable situations? Do I imitate Jesus in accomplishing the Father's plan? Eternal Father, 
by the merits of Jesus' third fall. Grant me the grace to seek, discern, and choose what you want of me. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus finally reaches the place of execution. Lacking all respect, the soldiers violently strip Jesus of his garments, reopening his bleeding wounds. Jesus suffers excruciating pain. Jesus suffers the pain and immodest treatment of his body in reparation for my sins of immodesty and impurity. St. Vincent Pilati says, I wish to mortify my sight by looking only at what I must look at. I will always be moderate in laughter with a humble, modest, and edifying look and do all things with a certain splendor of devotion that renders them pleasing in the eyes of God and venerable in the eyes of men. Do I make an effort to ensure that the ways in which I present myself, such as in the way I speak, think, and present myself, glorifies God and upholds my own dignity and the dignity of others? What does the virtue of modesty require for me in my state of life? Eternal Father, bless me with the spirit of modesty perfect purity, and genuine love according to my state of life. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Having been stripped of his clothes, the executioners now begin the crucifixion of Jesus on the wood of the cross. Forcefully stretching out his hands and his feet, they fasten Jesus to the cross and raise the cross, leaving him to die. Jesus freely accepts crucifixion, suffering the pains and torments in reparation for the sins of humanity. St. Vincent Pallotti says, My God, destroy me completely. Do everything in me. Absorb me. Destroy me. Reform me. Be all in me now and forever. Am I willing to sacrifice myself to be more Christ-like? Do I seek to live a life marked by conversion? Or do I remain comfortable in the same habits or sins? 
What practical steps do I need to live a life of conversion to follow Jesus? Eternal Father, through the merits of the crucifixion of Jesus, give me the grace of self-sacrifice in imitation of your Son. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our Divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus hangs on the cross for three hours in fidelity to all he preached, forgiving his executioners comforting the thief on his right, entrusting his mother to us as our mother, and abandoned by his friends, Christ expresses satisfaction that he has accomplished the Father's will and joyfully surrenders himself to his Father and dies. The manner in which Jesus died should impel us to die to self and live for Christ. St. Vincent Pallotti says, One must live perfectly dead to the world and to himself, so that he may possess those spiritual dispositions which make him say, the life I now live is not my own. It is Christ living in me. Am I ready to die to my self-centered living? Do I imitate the self-surrender of Jesus on the cross? Eternal Father, through the merits of Jesus' death on the cross, grant me the grace of dying to self and living for Christ and others. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our Divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving, as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mary, mother of Jesus, present at the cross, witnessed the torments her son endured, up to and including death. Joseph of Arimathea 
and Nicodemus, with the permission of Pilate, removed the body of Jesus from the cross and laid it in the arms of his sorrowful mother. She received the lifeless body of her son with a great tenderness and a deep sense of loss. Mary accepted it with great resignation in a true spirit of martyrdom, surrendering herself to the Father's will. Addressing this point, St. Vincent Pallotti says, Mary never lost sight of any aspect of the passion of Jesus, but participated so fully in the sufferings of her son that she arrived at the state of being the queen of martyrs. Have I considered the great loss Mary experienced at the death of Jesus? Do I have a spirit of acceptance of God's will? What do I learn from Mary's acceptance of her son's death? Eternal Father, through the merits of the sorrows of Mary, my mother, give me the grace of true resignation to your will and the spirit of martyrdom. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. They placed it in a new sepulchre that had been dug out of solid rock, closed the entrance of the tomb with a large stone, and then departed. By his resurrection, Jesus brings about a victory over sin and death, thus opening the possibility of our transformation into the likeness of God. For St. Vincent Pallotti, the merits of Jesus' burial and resurrection break open the tomb of sin, unite us to God, and transform us into the image of the Trinity. Do I open myself to the merits of Jesus' death and resurrection? Am I ready to die to sin with the help of God's grace? Do I allow God to transform my life? Eternal Father, through the merits of Jesus' burial and resurrection, grant me the grace to give up my attachment to sin and allow you to transform me. Eternal Father, in union with the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, I offer you the most precious blood of the Immaculate Lamb, our divine Redeemer, in thanksgiving as if you had already granted all the graces I have requested for myself and my neighbor. Amen. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. Closing prayer. 
My God, my merciful Father, you alone know and understand how ungrateful I have been. Not only have I forsaken you, but I have also betrayed Jesus as well. I have betrayed him as many times as the sins I committed and helped others to commit. Moreover, many times I have wounded the heart of my dear mother Mary with the spear of iniquity. I have neither profited from her mediation nor from the mediation of all the saints. I have always been a sinner because I have never cared to imitate the virtues of the saints as I could and should have done. But now enlightened by your grace, through your infinite mercy and through the merits of Jesus Christ, through the merits and intercessions of Mary, my most beloved mother, and all the angels and saints, I firmly believe that you will grant me perfect contrition for my sins and the grace to imitate the saints my dear mother Mary, and Jesus Christ, with greater perfection until death. Amen.